Look, I, I, the, the United States was built on the backs of <gasps> black and brown and people. And we want our reparations. And, you know, <laughs> the, uh, Americans. The, the, you know, the Catholic Church was built on the, black, on the backs of, of uh, people who, black and, uh, black and brown people who were forced to convert to Catholicism. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of that that we're coming to terms with. And I think one of the things that Charles can do to get some popularity mm -hmm. is maybe t take some time away from speaking to his plants and speak to this issue. All right, guys. So once again, we got to talk about Queen Elizabeth II and her death and the fallout from her death as the woke revolutionaries have decided to take advantage of her death as a way to score woke political points by bringing up history and a whole lot of things that they're mad about but they never actually went through okay like european colonialism and the slave trade whom the europeans were a part of and the woke revolutionaries who are always looking for a handout <laughs> looking for a way to get paid every single time the slavery conversation comes up. You already know what's coming up next. Reparations. So with that being said, you have people in the mainstream liberal media like The View in the wake of the death of Queen Elizabeth II, who is discussing this prospect of reparations and how they believe that the British crown needs to pay black people back for slavery. Take a look. I studied in London, and so I lived in London uh -huh. um, uh, for, for a while, and I got caught up in the pomp and circumstance of it all as well. I wanted to see the changing of the guards. I wanted to see everything. I wanted to meet the queen mm -hmm. um, because I think we all love <coughs> glam and pageantry. And I think, though, we can mourn the queen and not the empire. Yeah. Because sure. if you really think about what the monarchy... Um, was built on, it was built on the backs of black and brown people. She wore a crown with pillaged stones from India and Africa. And now what you're seeing, at least in the black communities that I'm a part of, um, they want reparations. You know, Barbados left, uh, left, the, uh, left the sort of this, oh this monarchy, this colonization. Yeah. Um, Jamaica, I'm, I have a lot of Jamaican friends, that's coming soon. And right now, Charles now is in a position, he's, I think, has 14 colonies that he is now head of state, including Australia and Canada, I believe, if yeah. I'm correct. It's time for him to modernize this monarchy. And it's time for him to provide reparations to all of those colonies. And I also think, you know, a monarchy, it's very easy to uplift one family. The harder thing is to uplift all families. And I think that he's in a position to be able to do that. Yeah, so there you have it. That is Sonny Holston, who is a part of the mainstream liberal media. Uh, coming out here and saying that she feels like the British monarchy owes black people or descendants of slaves reparations. Okay, that is what she said. And the unfortunate reality is, is that on The View, there's nobody there that ever pushes back against some of these claims and declarations that the cackling hens make on a daily basis. However, on CNN, at the very least, there is some opposition, right? There's some pushback against the wokeness. As Don Lemon had businesswoman Hillary Fordrich, who I think specializes in international business uh, in Britain, okay, um, he asked her about this topic of reparations, and let's just say that she sets Don Lemon straight on this idea that the British monarchy owes black people reparations. Take a listen. Well, this wealth, and you hear about it, comes as England is facing rising costs of living, a living crisis, a, a austerity budget cuts, and so on. And then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism, and they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back, and, uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are, you know, you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when that crossed the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2000... Naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery 
Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll continue to, to discuss in the future. Yeah. So Dummy Don Lemon didn't even push back against his guests for basically telling the truth about reparations. And the reason why Don Lemon didn't push back is because he knows that she was telling the truth, which is that it makes no sense for black people to go to the U.S. government or even the British monarchy to ask for reparations without going back to Africa, right? The original source, the people who actually originally sold black people into slavery for reparations first, right? You got to go to those people first. They committed the original sin. But again, this is what they don't teach you in the history books, right? When the war revolutionaries say we need CRT, okay, to teach a real history, right? The history they want to teach is all the bad things that white people did to black people, right? They don't want to teach all the black, bad things black people did to black people, which is how black people got sold into slavery during the transatlantic slave trade, along with other groups of people as well, too, that were also slaves at the time, just not... The transatlantic slave trade, right, which is mainly Africans. Uh, you had the Slavic <laughs> slave trade going on, right? You had the Arab slave trade going on. You had slavery all over the place. But for some reason, some reason, when this reparations conversation comes up, which in my opinion is a total, complete waste of time for various reasons, they never bring up the African kingdoms and their role in slavery because without them, it doesn't happen. The Atlantic slave trade doesn't happen. Europeans can't be nearly as successful. They were not capable of invading deep into Africa like that, right? They would not be nearly as effective and efficient at gathering slaves unless the African kings or kingdoms helped gather the slaves in the first place, which they were, right? That's exactly what they were doing. Not only were they gathering the slaves for the Europeans, they were mass executing the slaves, using them as human sacrifices, having them till their plantations, <laughs> grow their crops, had them doing all types of stuff that sounds very similar to what the white man had their slaves doing. OK, now I'm about to say something very controversial, but, you know, hey, this is the type of stuff that needs to be said when you're having this conversation about reparations and, and, and slavery. OK, this is some real stuff. This is some real stuff. Why do people believe that? During a time in which slavery was normal, people had a different set of moral standards at the time. It was not seen as morally abhorrent the way it is now. If I buy a slave as property, I traded something for it, okay? I traded something for it. I traded something valuable for it, okay? If I gave away something for the slave, why are you so upset? Why are you more upset for me, the person who paid for the slave, than the person who sold me the slave in the first place. Because you can't blame me for buying a slave and <laughs> treating it like a slave. You can't blame the person that bought the slave. You got to blame the person that captured the slave in the first place. Because without capturing the slave, the people wouldn't have been enslaved, right? I'm just saying, I, I, I really don't understand why is it that we have this reparations conversation, which, hey, I agree, black people are owed reparations. It's never going to happen from the U.S. government. So in my opinion, begging for it is a complete waste of time. And people that are selling people the idea that they're going to get reparations or that reparations are going to happen, there's any realistic chance of reparations are con artists. But if you're going to beg for it, go to Africa and beg for it, right? Go there, okay? Because they committed the original sin. And the Europeans, for as much as they played a large role in slavery, they also helped end slavery. Which is something the woke revolutionaries never mention when talking about European colonialism and the legacy of European colonialism. They don't talk about the fact that European colonialism ended slavery, right? Ended the transatlantic slave trade. No, no, no. They can't get credit for that. We must, must only attack them for their role in the transatlantic slave trade, even 
No, without the Africans, they would not have been nearly successful. But let's forget about that. That's not the history we really want to talk about. We teach CRT here. Hey, okay? CRT, which means everything that the white man did bad to the black man, that is what we want to teach in school. We don't want to teach anything good that the white man did for the black man. Like, for example, fighting the Civil War, right? Like the Union, okay, all those white people, white men who died fighting on behalf of black slaves, right? Wanting black slaves to be free, defeating the Confederacy. You never hear the world revolutionaries give that credit and say, hey, you know, there's a lot of white people that fought and died, you know, for slaves to be free. They never get credit for that. But all white people in this country, according to the woke revolutionaries, have to be damned, damned for eternity for the sin of slavery, even though their families or their ancestors never owned slaves or had nothing to do with slavery. Right. Again, you understand how this works. You get credit for nothing and blame for everything, including the things that you had nothing to do with. Right. But, you know, Africa, though. Right. Uh, those West African nations. Coastal uh, countries, right? Those old kingdoms. Nobody ever talks about their role and how they're the ones that actually really enable this stuff. They're the straw that stirs the drink. Without them, none of this stuff is possible. But hey, you know, some of these people <laughs> really do believe that their lives would have been better off if they had stayed in Africa and there was no European colonialism. Because, you know, in Africa, they weren't doing human sacrifices and slavery and beheading people and killing people and warring and... You know, all that other stuff that, you know, they pretend that never happened in Africa. Uh, only Europeans could do that stuff. No, no, no. They were just doing their peaceful world making. Their peaceful world making. That's what lies people actually believe. But hey, the point is that if you actually understand real history, um, if you're going to ask for reparations, which I feel is a waste of time, then you should go to Africa, right? Because they have more to do with it and they have more unpaid debt in regards to selling people to slavery in the first place than the white man, in my opinion, considering how the white man did contribute to ending slavery, not just the transatlantic slave trade, but also uh, fought a whole civil war to end chattel slavery, which is the worst slavery ever, right? The worst slavery ever in America. But hey, that will require a nuanced understanding of history, something that a lot of people really don't have. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.